boost mobile, let's go. If I ain't living, I don't know who is. In this city, got cars and a place to live. I'm off and I don't care about calls. Last name, do pre first name, the boss. I came from the bottom, now I'm in the tip. It. Make my mark in it so they never forget me. Mama always said, baby boy, you gon' make it. They wouldn't get to me, so I had to take it. What's up? I'm that dude that got what you need. Eyes on the prize, picking up speed. It's out there, I'm gon' get it. Hey, living out my dream, so you know the boy with it. Where you at? The first campaign really put Boost on the map. We were a two-year-old brand, we weren't even national, people didn't know who we were, and we needed to get on the map in a big way. So we identified three artists, Kanye Midwest, Ludacris from the South, and the game from West Coast, uh, to really reinforce the idea of how Boost helps connect people regardless of where you are. So in that regard, it was a great success. People still talk about that, and that's why we're, we're bringing a group of artists back together for Anthem 2.0. We wanted to identify uh, three artists that were at very, very stages of their lives. So if you think about it, uh, JD, very successful producer, got the perfect life, you know, real success producing Mariah's album. I mean, he's at the pinnacle, right? So he's, he's there. I'm off and I don't care about cause last name, do pre first name, the boss. I'm well, we've been down boost for a minute, you know what I mean? Doing things with them, just doing different things, the charity, the, you know, the rock called concert, the, you know, just being a part of boost. Always believe what you believe, you know what I mean? That's the biggest advice I can give you, you know what I mean? Like, if you have an idea in your, in your head that you think is something that will work, you should always push that idea. Don't ever let somebody push it away from you because those ideas that people make you think are small is the ideas that always end up being the ones that's big. So Jeezy just uh, came off of the success of his second album. He's on the way up. I mean, he's gonna be around for a long time. He has a very strong fan base. It's out there, I'm gonna get it. Living out my dream, so you know the boy winning, let's go. I've been down with Boots for a long time. Uh, we did the first Warcore uh, event. And it's been, you know what I'm saying, it's been up here ever since. So for them to take it to the next level, for me to be a part of it, I think it's only right. I didn't want to be a statistic, you know what I'm saying? I saw what everybody else was going through, and, you know, and everything that was happening to everybody around me, so I just did what I, I knew best. Music was my way to get away from a lot of things. So, you know, when I, I started doing it myself, it made that much more sense. And as I got better at it, people started appreciating it, and it just went from there. Mickey Avalon, um, new artist, recently signed to Interscope, um, got a lot of credible fan base, no one knows who he is. But they're gonna put some marketing dollars behind him in a big way, so he's about to blow. I had rap since I was a kid, but just for myself, I've been on a few underground projects. But it wasn't something I ever thought I'd do as a career, or it wasn't a dream of mine, I guess I should say. I paint. And then um, my friends were handing out CDs that I was on, but I lived in like a halfway house. I didn't even know he was handing them out. And then, uh, who's my manager now, they contacted me, we started working together. And then I started going to the studio, and then we were hand I was working at a pizza shop, and we hand out like three songs. And so by the time we played the first show, everyone already knew the lyrics. And then kind of by then, I couldn't really go back. The more successful I am, obviously, the more I can get back monetarily and, and with my time. You know, if it all ended tomorrow, then I still would have gotten myself out of the gutter. We were going to do this big shoot. We were going to be in Miami in the water, JD in the boat with Janet. Right. We were going to be in New York, you know, in the city, you know, Times Square. Then we started thinking about it and thought about graphic animation. And when we started looking at some of these companies and how talented they are, we were like, you know what? Boost is committed to innovation. This may be something new and different and not like the typical, you know, commercial or video that you may see. Boost did an offline and uh, offline edit where they used a facility in New York who uh, ultimately cut the piece and so everyone could establish what shots they want and, you know, the close ups, the wides, just get all the standard shots that they want and the look of each artist will perverse. When we first get it, it comes to us and we rebuild it, it looks something similar to um, this. Their comfort level comes from, um, it's their song, it's their lyrics, it's their verse, like that's what's familiar to them. So they should just perform it in the way they know how, you know, and so we play off of that. We will, um, you know, take that essence that they deliver and 
use that as our foundation, our starting point to build upon it. We bring it into 3D to uh, basically map out our move and, and, and come up with like the choreography of the, of the shot, you know, how it's gonna flow, how it's gonna move, and then ultimately how the typography is gonna exist with um, the artist. Uh, in this case, we're using a shot from Jeezy where he says, uh, make my mark in it so they never forget me. So we bring it into 3D space, this is the key footage, and we start moving them uh, in a three-dimensional environment, which ultimately allows us to uh, manipulate the movement and where their placement is on screen mixed with the typography that, um, that they're saying at the same time. Well, then what we do is render it out of 3D and bring it into a 2D program called After Effects, and that's where we end up doing our actual uh, compositing and lighting and, and uh, final touches. This is the phone that the artists are on and, and that they're using and uh, throughout the piece and basically acts as our gateway from getting from shot to shot as well. It's like communication. There's this kind of this vibe of each artist talking to each other, you know what I mean, via the phone. What we've done then is built the phone in 3D and uh, created it so that we don't just have to shoot this or like put it on a stand and try to make the moves. We basically rebuilt it in 3D so that we can use it in any way or angle or transition. Anything allows us to uh, take it anywhere we want to go with it once we build it in 3D. This is a shot breakdown for Mickey Avalon. So in this scene, basically what we've done is created this street corner that he recites the first line. Um, the first line is, I'm that dude that's got what you need. We've created a transition in 3D that'll take us to our next shot. Um, again, really playing off of transitions, getting from one shot to the next in a seamless manner. And for JD, that we've broken down where a plane flies from behind him and we travel into the cockpit of the plane ultimately to his next shot. We've got animation, we've got these great artists, we've got original track, it's produced by JD. All three of the artists laid down their verses, they're all very hot. So I think you'll be very surprised and pleased at what you'll see. Well, we've been down boost for a minute, you know what I mean, doing things with them, just doing different things, the charity, the, you know, the rock called concert, the, you know, just being a part of boost. Boost, you know, boost is connected to the hood in, in a lot of different ways, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, they always around. We start out, we did like parties and stuff like that, and uh, we just built a relationship to get to this point.